The Great Trouble, A Mystery of London, the Blue Death, and a Boy Called Eel, by Deborah Hopkinson. Epilogue, 1855, Wednesday, September 26th. At the invitation of Dr. Snow and Reverend Whitehead, Flory, Henry, and I went to a committee meeting at St. James's Church. The pump on Broad Street had been without its handle for more than a year, and the neighborhood had, had petitioned that it be put back. The well had been repaired so waste couldn't seep underground, and cholera had not appeared again in the neighborhood. So it was no surprise that the vote came out in favor of opening the pump again. Afterward, we said warm goodbyes to Dr. Snow and Reverend Whitehead, who were off to drink tea and compare notes on the papers they had written about the spread of cholera. Flory's employer, a reform-minded lady named Mrs. Mary Tealby, had been so impressed with Flory's role in making Dr. Snow's map she had given Flory special permission to come. It helped that Dr. Snow himself had paid the good lady a visit and asked for Flory's help in illustrating the final version of his map. Flory, Henry, and I began walking, catching up on our lives and reflecting on all that had changed in the past year. I led the way and somehow found myself heading toward Blackfriars Bridge. We can't get home too late, said Henry, who loved living with Mr. Edward and his wife just as much as I did. For me, it was being able to breathe again, a chance to use my mind for more than just scavenging. On the bridge, I leaned over to look at the dark sweep of the Thames below us. I thought of my mudlarking days, trudging through the slimy mud, covered in filth from head to toe. Have you seen Thumbless Jack recently? Flory asked softly. No, I said, putting my hand on Dilly's head to keep her close. Not for a long time. But the words Jake had spoken that morning, the great trouble began, came back to me. Ain't we all river finders? Put on this earth to try to get by one day at a time. We're all we've got under this sky. We need to play fair and take care of one another. We had done that as best we could. Dr. Snow, Reverend Whitehead, Flory, and me. Thumbless Jake. I wondered what would happen to him. It would be nice to think he could find his way back to Hazel and his children though somehow I didn't think so. He'd had such trouble in his life. But then again, so had all of us that summer when the great trouble had come to Broad Street. And somehow, we had survived. <laughs>